The UK's new Nationality and Borders Bill has caused widespread controversy and public backlash, largely due to a provision that would give the Home Secretary the power to strip certain British citizens of their citizenship without notifying them. The bill has wide-reaching ramifications for those seeking asylum in Britain as well as for British citizens. The bill makes it a criminal offence to arrive in the UK unlawfully, imposing a maximum sentence of up to four years. It also has provisions that would allow the UK to deport asylum seekers to other countries where they could be housed in detention centres while their asylum claims are considered in the UK. This is directly based on Australia's model of offshore detention, designed as a deterrent for asylum seekers, which has roundly been condemned as inhumane, illegal and a form of human rights abuse. In November, UK Home Secretary Priti Patel also announced a provision that means the government would no longer be required to notify people when revoking their citizenship. The provision was only debated for nine minutes. Passed in 2002, the Nationality, Immigration and Asylum Act already allowed the government to revoke citizenship as long as the person held another nationality. In 2006, the Home Secretary was given the power to deprive dual nationals of their British citizenship on the ground that it was conducive to the public good. In 2014, these powers were extended to include British citizens born overseas who did not have dual citizenship. This meant that those being stripped of citizenship would essentially be made stateless if the government deemed they had acted in a manner which is seriously prejudicial to the vital interests of the United Kingdom, any of the islands, or British overseas territory. The new clause of the Nationality and Borders Bill introduced by Priti Patel allows for the government to strip individuals of their British citizenship without notice if it is deemed in the public interest. The Nationality and Borders Bill adds to existing powers that the government already has, which enable it to tell people of colour, Muslims and those who have ancestry in foreign countries, to make them second class citizens. So the white people in the UK, they will be considered as you know, first class citizens and those of colour will be second class citizens depending on their good behaviour. So if they misbehave, if they commit certain crimes, if they travel to certain countries, then the Home Secretary has the right to deprive them of their nationality. There is widespread fear that Clause 9 will disproportionately target those from ethnic minorities, particularly those with parents born overseas. The precedent for this law revolves around the case of Shamima Begum, a woman of Bangladeshi descent born in the UK who was accused of joining the Islamic State as a teenager. Begum was stripped of her British citizenship at the age of 19 on national security grounds. The government argued that despite Begum not being born in Bangladesh or having a Bangladeshi passport, stripping her of UK citizenship would not render her stateless since Bangladesh considers anyone born to a Bangladeshi citizen to automatically be a citizen until the age of 21. A recent judgment by the Supreme Court ruled that Begum would not be permitted to return to the UK to challenge the deprivation order which cancelled her citizenship. The amendment has led to widespread backlash from human rights advocates who say it will adversely affect people seeking asylum and that it is in violation of the UK's commitments under both the UN Refugee Convention and the European Convention on Human Rights. Human rights advocates also say the bill would not only criminalise asylum seekers but also anyone taking part in refugee rescue attempts. As it stands, the new measures could contribute further to creating two levels of citizenship in the UK. Many are worried because the new changes mean that naturalised UK citizens could not only be stripped of citizenship, but be made stateless without notice, although the government claims otherwise. Some estimate that up to 6 million people in the UK could be affected, particularly those from non-white minority backgrounds. The Nationality and Borders Bill will not necessarily change the number of people who could be stripped of their citizenship, but if passed, it could definitely make the process much easier. In a recent letter circulated by UK human rights group CAGE, 10 people claim to have suffered illegal torture and detention abroad as a result of deprivation orders that stripped their citizenship. Some were accused of belonging to terror groups or prescribed organizations, but were not allowed to stand trial or defend themselves against these allegations. 